Well, you see the title <laughs> right now. I just said basketball. Uh, but today, we're talking the, the NBA season. The NBA season is upon us. The NBA season is upon us. And well, the 23 24 season, it's here. Um, again, opening night will include the Lakers and the Nuggets. Then Phoenix, Golden State. So we got we got matchups up the wazoo already out the gate. Of course, you know there, there's there's just there, there's just so many storylines that happened during the off season after Denver Nuggets won their first championship, beating the Miami Heat in five games, four to one in that thrilling series in which Joke. Murray, uh, Porter Jr., I mean, everybody, Bruce Brown, I mean, the whole shebang for the Nuggets was just doing whatever they wanted. And again, we have the in season tournament now, so two teams will be playing 83 games technically. Right now, the schedules are set at 80, but again, the with the way things are, you know, the in-season tournament is going to be a thing, so there's going to be some wishy-washy things there as far as the schedule goes. Uh, but honestly, you know, I, I, I'm i going to watch the in-season tournament championship some, for some godforsaken reason, but, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a rough way to get there. But, yeah, um, again, you know, this offseason has included some things like um, Chris Paul, he's a Golden State Warrior. You have Damian Lillard in Milwaukee. You have James Harden still in Philly. He wants out. You know, Victor Wimbanyana, you know, a human cheat code. Wimbanyama, human cheat code. Chet Holmgren, he's doing better, doing, doing some interesting things. LeBron, another year of LeBron, 21 years of LeBron James in the NBA. Again, Jokic and crew look to repeat. So there's also other guys, like Henderson, Luka Doncic, you know, the same old guys, you know, same old, same old. But, you know, here's really what my predictions are for the NBA this year. Um, I know, I know some of, some of these look a little obvious. Some of these don't. Again, the Nuggets. Uh, the Nuggets, I mean, with that core four, Aaron Gordon included as well, Jokish, Murray, Porter Jr., Gordon, you know, and the guys, you know, coming off the bench, you know, now, it, it won't be Bruce Brown and Jeff Green, but it definitely will be some guys that will get some time, you know. So there, there's going to be some interesting guys, I think, coming off the bench for the Nuggets, but again, that core four, well, maybe Christian Braun, too, you know, who was doing some great things in the NBA Finals, I think. You know, and again, I watched the Finals. I watched the first four games. I couldn't watch Game 5 due to, you know, things out of my control. But, yeah, um, you know, there's the Milwaukee Bucks, you know, Giannis, Lillard, leading at the top. So that could be a one-two punch at the top. For the Bucks now, the Bucks blew everything last year, <laughs> yeah, in the first round. But uh, yeah, there, there's just this, there's a there. This is this is the time for the Bucks to try and get the championship. This is the time for them to get it, and you know they could get another. There's potential for them getting another, but I don't know. Oh man. And then Boston, you know, no Mark is smart anymore. We still have Jalen Brown being, you know, inconsistent. You have Chris Stops, Porzingis, you have Drew Holiday, you have, of course, Jason Tatum. I mean, this, this is a top city team for sure. Um, you know, there, there's other guys. Al Horford is still there, you know, defensive beast still at his old age. Still there, beasting and feasting. You know, the whole gang in Boston, for the most part. Again, changes are abound, but, yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. 
And you got the Suns, the Phoenix Suns, Durant, Booker, and Bradley Beal. Not no, no Aiton, no Paul. But again, Phoenix blew it yet again in a series. You know that that could that does that they just they just got smacked around. You know. It, they 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 needed to they needed to do something to try and catch up to Denver. So I guess Bradley Beal, you know, will do that and Yusuf Nurkic, also. So Devin Booker's gonna have a season ahead of him. Honestly, this man could win the MVP in my honest opinion, but that that's just me. Uh, I know people are going to say, well, maybe MB will win it again. Maybe Jokish. May, maybe. I don't know. We'll, but my eyes definitely are looking towards Devin Booker or Jason Tatum. I think we might see a new MVP this year. New NBA MVP, I think. I don't know. We'll see. And, you know, for the Lakers, who I have projected as a, you know, like a four seed, really, um, you know, they could get out their own way at times last year. I still think, I still think, you know, there's, you know, the project, I have them projected as like a five seed. I still think there's some things that, you know, the Lakers can improve upon, you know, you have Austin Reeves now, D'Angelo Russell, Rui Hachimura, you know, all major players in, you know, getting getting the roles they have. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to AD, the brow, and it's going to come down to King, LeBron James. It's going to come down to those two. And are they going to be able to, you know, not jet lag and be able to get, get the – traction needed because again they just got smacked around you know they got smacked around for better or worse in in their playoff series the Mavs I have projected as a you know six C type team right now um the Warriors again I still they're 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 still a top four team you know, like a, a, at least the top five, six team in the NBA until proven otherwise. You know, I know Clay Thompson's, you know, a big if, if issue, you know, as far as his, like his contract goes, but again, Curry, Clay himself, Draymond, you know, the group is still together. Wiggins has been improving. Kevon Looney's been improving. Chris Paul is on this team now. You know, there's just a lot here that you could say the Warriors could. You know, continue the dynasty and win the NBA championship. There is a lot here for them. For the Knicks, it it this offense runs through Jalen Brunson. Julius Randle's inconsistent for me. I still think this is like a top four seed though because it's the East. Uh, you know, but there, there's there's just a lot here that the Knicks can capitalize on. They have some pretty decent skill players that were able to get them in a position where they could go to the second round. But they got to keep going past the second round. Oh, that's the problem. They, they got to go past the second round. And, and are all these pieces enough? Or, you know, Josh Hart, Quickly, Robinson, Barrett, you know, Randall. Are these pieces enough? Because, again, I think the offense runs through Jalen Brunson. I think this offense runs through him. And not without him. So, 76ers, again, we don't know what they're going to do, you know, as far as Jaden's heart goes. Again, you know, Maxie's been pretty good. Joel Embiid is Joel Embiid. Tobias Harris has been pretty good. Uh, up and down to me. But, again, it this, this 76ers team, the process still runs through Joel Embiid. So, you know, I still think this is a top three team in the East. Right now, so there, there's there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things up the air. I think the thing that they need to do is you know send James Harden somewhere. It, it, you know that might propel them down this tier list a little bit, but you know I, I think I, I think Philadelphia is in a comfortable position where you know with the way the rest of the East looks, 
I still think this is a top three to six team that won't be in the play in. I still think this is a top tier team. You know. Um Cleveland picked up some good guys. Again, this is the Mitchell and Garland show, you know, still, but you know, they picked up some guys like Max Struess, Georges Yang, you know, they 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 got they got some good guys. They got some good guys. But again, it runs through Mitchell and Garland until proven otherwise. Miami, Jimmy Butler's new look ain't ain't doing it for me. They got Bam Bam, they got Tyler Harum, you know. He's finally back, you know. He's probably fully healthy at this point, you know. That there, there's other guys that can do their thing to Caleb Martin, Nikola Jovic, you know, the V, not a, not a K, uh, Josh Richardson, uh, Jamie Jockey. Is, you know, I'm surprised they got him from UCLA. I'm surprised uh, he got him, but you know, it, you know, the Heat, they. Made it through improper odds to get to the NBA Finals anyway. And for them to go back, they're going to need to do the same thing as they did. They couldn't get Damian Lillard, but, you know, the you know the Heat, they still have the tools that I think they could be like a top six seed in the East. Um, Grizzlies, not so much. I don't, I don't, I don't see it. I just don't see it here. I, I don't I don't see it with the way I see this is more like a play in team to me. Uh, you can honestly flip the Grizzlies and the Mavs. They're kinda they're kind of the same kind of team. You know, Ja is gonna be out for 25 games. So, you know, it's gonna be up to Jared Jackson Jr., Marcus Smart, Desmond Bay. Is that really the roster that's gonna get you, you know, in a good position when Ja Morant comes back from his suspension? I don't know. I don't think so. And, you know, the Clippers, I I, I just I, I kind of had them in a in the draft lottery for some reason. But honestly, you can flip them with one of these other teams that I got in the play-in. I don't know what I was thinking. But, again, the way this team was haggled last year, they, they just – they just, they just couldn't, you know, get out their own way. So you can honestly, so honestly, I messed up on this tier list already. I messed up. So uh, you can flip it with either, like you can flip it with Minnesota, because I'm, uh, or, or New Orleans, or maybe even OKC. Honestly, you can honestly flip the like, the th- the Clippers and the Thunder. You can flip those two. I think this is like a playing team type deal. You know, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Russell Westbrook. That's that's the team. This is this is going to be a team where they have to, where these three have to play together, pretty much the entire season. Again, you have to play sixty five games at the very least to be considered for NBA awards. Remember, you have to play sixty five games. So, you know, yeah, this is a team where I think all the all the pieces have to come together for this team to be in a position of where they can, you know, be, you know, right in the mix. Again, forget about my tier list for a second and just you can just mentally flip the Thunder and the Clippers. I, I, I totally forgot about the Clippers for a second. Uh I mean, I have I have Sacramento, you know, actually more so and again the the West is much tougher than the East. <laughs> At times, not necessarily last year, I don't think, but definitely still a tough cookie to crack. And I have this team pretty high projected, honestly, uh, maybe a little too high. But again, the Monta Sabonis is just a different animal. Different animal, you know. I mean, this is this is a team that. This is a team that that could do some great things in the near future. This is a great. This is a great one-two punch. The Aaron Fox and Sabonis is a great one-two punch, and the way the Kings played last year, they could do they could do a lot of damage. Again, Oklahoma City's a team that a lot of people you know have projected pretty, you know, towards you know, the middle of the pack, so to speak. Uh, 
you know, again, kind of like Memphis, but with Shy, Giddy, Chet Holmgren finally playing, Jalen Williams. I mean, this is a team that could be a dangerous force in the future. Long gone are the days of Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook in Oklahoma City. This is a new era for the Thunder. So these guys, these, guys, these young cats, they have a lot to prove. I don't think they'll get too far. They may be a first-round team, but I don't think they'll get too far after that. But watch out for them in the future, though. Watch out for them. And of course, you know, the Minnesota Timberwolves, Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, Rudy Gobert, Mike Conley. This is a team. This is a freakishly good team, you know, that has the potential to be a really good team. It's good, but again, look at the rest of this conference. Look at the rest of the West. Also good. So... Minnesota's going to be in a long pack of teams, you know. So they're going to be in a long pack of teams. Again, same thing with New Orleans. Zion finally played. Zion may finally be able to play, you know, a little bit more to the quarter of a season. You know, with Brandon Ingram running the offense, CJ McCollum, Jonas Valanciunas, you know. I mean, this is a team also very young, can do some damage in the future. The Pelicans can you know, the Mavs. I, I you know, uh, again, like I like I said, you can honestly put them in a play-in team type of position. You know, you have Luca, you have Kyrie Irving, you have you have a new, basically a new Mavs roster, along with Grant Williams and rookie Derek Lively. You know, there there's there's a lot of things here for the Mavs. You know, with all these new guys, but. I don't know. We'll see. Again, I feel like this is a team that you can honestly just slide them into the play-in. You can replace them with, like, the Clippers or, you know, the Grizzlies, maybe even the Thunder. And again, it's just going to be a tough, tough. Somebody is going to get mad at the, end of the, at the end of the season. Somebody that's going to be, you know, number 11 in the West is going to be real mad. I think the West is a lot tougher than the East right now. You know, you have the Hawks here, Trey Young. Still leading the way, the month. Uh, Dejounte Murray, Clint Capella, you know, r- r- a, a pretty good roster, you know. You know, the, the, there's there's some guys, you know, like Patty Mills, Weston Matthews, Sidney Bay, you know, that that they these guys guys can definitely be some role players. I, again, I don't know how good this projection is or where I have them, but you know, the, I don't know. I don't think the Pacers are really that type of team. Benedict Matherin, Miles Turner, Buddy Heald, Tyrese Halberton. Come on, draft lottery for the Pacers. Stop it. Brooklyn, same thing, draft lottery. Michael Bridges is not going to get it done. Cam Johnson's not going to get it done. Orlando, Paulo Boncaro, Franz Wagner, you know, Honestly, out of all the East teams that could potentially get into the postseason, it, it, it's definitely this type of team right here. You know, Chicago, same thing. Type of team that's a playing team. You know, definitely not a type of team that you want to really look at too long. You know, you still have the Martirosi, you still have Zach Levine, you still have Nikola Bucevic. You know. To let Alex Caruso playing, you know, it, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know about the Bulls. I don't see it. Jazz. Uh, 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 this is a this is a tough look, honestly. At this point, I don't know what kind of I don't know what kind of team this is. This is a this is a team that just fell completely off the face of the earth. Uh, there's just there's just not a lot here for the Jazz. A team that used to be something is, you know, that could compete in the West doesn't feel like a team that could compete in the West anymore. This is a draft lottery type team. Toronto, I have them. I have them in the play in ESPN has them like twenty fourth. You know, no no Fred Van Bleed anymore. 
I don't really get it. Like if if, if like if Fred Van Bleet didn't leave, you know, like th- this would be more like a top seven team. But for now, I'm gonna have Toronto as a playing team. You know, still have Pascal Siakam, you still have Scotty Barnes, you still have OG Anunoby, you still. You still, you still have some things here, but the clock's ticking. Toronto's got to get something done this season. They got to get something done. You know, you also have Scotty Barnes, um, of course, Victor Wimpenyama. This is still a draft lottery type team. Sorry, Spurs. I'm sorry, this is still a draft lottery team. Again, uh, Rockets draft lottery. I don't know why Fred VanVleet is in Houston. Why is he here? Honestly, I mean, I get it. I get it. You have Dylan Brooks as well, and again, these these pretty good young guys like Jalen Green, Jabari Smith, Alfred Sengen. You know, uh, there, there's there's some talent here, but you know, the way the rest of the West is, Houston's just not going to get over the hump right now. Maybe in a couple of years, the Golden State dynasty, I think, will fall off starting maybe this year, honestly. It, this might be the year where, this, where the Golden State dynasty kind of ends. It kind of falls off completely. We have a new West overlord maybe potentially taking over and maybe Denver. Uh, at, but again, teams like, teams like you know Houston have real good upside. Teams like Oklahoma City, real good upside. Teams like New Orleans, good upside. Teams like the Lakers, uh, uh, teams like Toronto, uh, you know, New York, uh, you know, you know the, the type of team that you should be looking out for are teams like the Rockets and the Spurs and the Thunder and New Orleans. These are the types of teams you should be looking out for in the future that, could be look, that we could be looking at in the NBA landscape as far as teams that have the talented guys you know, right now, they have the talented guys right now that can get stuff done. You know, for some of these other teams like Detroit, absolutely not. Portland, absolutely not. There's nothing here for Portland. DeAndre Ayton, absolutely not. Not that type of guy anymore. Absolutely not. Charlotte, LaMelo Ball, come on now. Is is Our defense is really... Staring at you in the face, saying, "Oh yeah, Lamelo Ball is going to do something to me. He, he, I'm afraid of Lamelo Ball." Now, Charlotte back in the basement with you, Washington also in the basement. Kyle Kuzma, come on now. Jordan Poole, come on now. Stop it. Tyus Jones leading an offense, come on now. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> you got to be kidding me, man. So yeah. Um, Again, the West is a lot harder to predict in than the East because again, you just have some teams like Detroit, Charlotte, Indiana, Brooklyn, Washington. You know, th- those are kind of obvious. But again, you know, the West is just a lot harder. It's going to be a lot harder in the West. The NBA champion might come from the West yet again this year. But don't be surprised if an East team takes it. I don't know if it's going to be Philadelphia, Milwaukee, or Boston. But one of those three is definitely the favorite in the East to get to the finals. And, you know, I, I think I think our NBA finals is going to look, you know, kind of like, you know, maybe Denver, Boston. I, I, that's That's what I'm thinking. But watch it be a complete surprise. Watch this prediction completely get blown up in my face. You've seen my predictions so far for the NFL completely get blown up, blown up in my face. College football hasn't happened yet. But the NBA, I'm willing to bet something stupid will happen, and we're going to have a weird season again. I'm trying to do better with the NBA this year. Uh, last year didn't go too well. So I'm going to try again this year. And... I'll, and I'll be seeing you throughout the season. It won't be, you know, it won't be, you know, like last year with college basketball where I was trying to do it every single week. It'll be like every two to three weeks. So NBA will be included, college basketball, both men's and women's. And then, yes, this upcoming 
year we will finally talk the WNBA. We will finally talk the two-time defending champion, the Las Vegas Aces. Um, yeah, so we're going to have a long season ahead as far as, you know, the basketball landscape goes. Stick with me. I have things to say throughout the season. I'll be watching games, more so college basketball than the EPA. That's just me. Um, but I'll definitely be watching, you know, a lot of NBA games this year, a lot more than I did last year. Uh, yeah, so y'all take care. I will see you all tomorrow to talk college football, and that'll do it for me. What do you think of my predictions? I know, I'm, again, I, this is this is very tough, you know, the, especially the West. The West is very tough, but it's like, what do I do here? What do I do? You know, like, what do, what do I put here? Like, it was hard. Like, the West was hard. The East was far too easy to put together as far as the draft lottery goes. But, yeah, these are my predictions for the most part. I know Sacramento's placement is probably going to surprise people, but this is just me. So, y'all take care. Again, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow night to talk college football because we got a lot to talk about there.